Hi, this is Fatih Nyaro. I am a Fulbright Scholar here at the University of Southern Indiana, and I'm pursuing my master's degree in public administration with a focus on nonprofit uh, administration. And today I'm going to talk about nonprofits online accountability, that subsector affects online accountability. As you know, the nonprofit sector plays an essential role in the US economy. It is known uh, to be the third largest provider of employment in the country. And uh, according to a report by the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2018, nonprofits employ nearly 12.3 million people in the US. And the sector also relies on charitable gifts to uh, operate and these donations you know, are from individuals, corporate foundations, government grants and so on and so forth. It was also estimated in 2018 that these nonprofit organizations received $423.71 billion in donations. So uh, this shows how people and governments really contribute, donate, you know, to these nonprofit organizations for them to be able to carry out their daily uh, activities, their daily mission, to provide services to their clients. But the unfortunate fact is that these donations have not always been very well managed you know, by uh, some nonprofit leaders and uh, nonprofit organizations. We have the case, for example, of the uh, executive director of United Way, who uh, had some time confused you know, the funds that were destined to the organization, to his personal funds, and he was using uh, those funds to do his own businesses. We also have the case of uh, the American Red Cross, uh, which did not manage very well, you know, uh, the funds it received after the 9-11 attacks in uh, New York City. And because of these mismanagements, you know, of funds by these uh, nonprofit organization leaders, some watchdog organizations and regulatory uh, institutions have raised the voice, you know, for uh, nonprofits to be much more accountable towards the stakeholder, towards the donors, towards the general public. So the purpose of this study is to analyze you know, nonprofits online accountability by subsector. Uh, because uh, I have decided to do that because what I've realized is that uh, subsectors uh, have not been very much investigated, have not been very much studies, uh, studied by scholars. So I have decided to focus on health, education, arts and culture, and human services uh, for that study. And there's a theory that was proposed by Saxton and Google, you know, to understand uh, or to show online accountability. And this is known as the theory of disclosure and uh, dialogue. The disclosure aspect of online accountability has actually uh, two components, which are financial disclosure and performance disclosure. And the dialogue component the dialogue aspect of online accountability also has two components, which are stakeholder input and interactive uh, engagement. I will come into you know, further details regarding these um, you know, two aspects of uh, online uh, accountability in the methods. I have uh, three hypotheses regarding online accountability, and the first one is stated as well, organization subsector defer in the degree of the online accountability. As I said, you know, uh, this has not been very well investigated, but there's a scholar, um, Slatten, and her colleague in 2016, who conducted a study about a specific subsector, which was uh, arts and culture. They focused the study on only uh, arts and culture subsector. And they came to the conclusion that this uh, type of organization, you know, organization in the art and culture subsector, 
do not provide online accountability unless there is a legal, you know, a, a, a legal uh, punishment for not doing that. What does it mean? You know, some states are, are more uh, oppressive or repressive, I would say. Some states are more repressive than others uh, regarding accountability by uh, nonprofit organization. So these uh, scholars found that states where uh, the law does not, prov uh, does not foresee or does not provide any punishment, any sanction for nonprofit organizations that fail to show online accountability, well, arts and culture subsector will not just engage in any online accountability. They will not disclose any information online. And um, so I, I, I uh, expect that there should be, you know, a difference between subsectors regarding online accountability. And this is uh, the main purpose of this study. And the second hypothesis I have here is uh, the higher the level of asset size, the higher the level of online accountability. And this has uh, been proven by previous research. Saxton and Guo, actually 2011, found that you know, uh, online accountability is affected by uh, the size of the uh, asset for an organization. So organization with higher asset show a higher level of online accountability. And also Slatten and her colleague also found that as asset size increases, uh, financial disclosure and interactivity also increase uh, in nonprofit organization. And uh, uh, I am trying to test this uh, hypothesis also to see if this is still uh, valid nowadays. And the third hypothesis I have here is as personal size increases, online accountability also increases. I have just uh, assumed that uh, with uh, organization with larger assets are the ones uh, with you know the also higher la uh, higher level of employees uh, you know the larger number of employees so uh, it is reasonable I think to expect that accountability will also increase with uh, personnel size. So how do I measure? How do I measure these hypotheses? So in order to measure the, uh, the uh, hypothesis, I randomly selected you know, a nonprofit organization based on the 2015 National Center for Charitable Statistics uh, core file. So I downloaded it, that core file, which has uh, list of millions of nonprofit organization throughout the United States. And I strategically uh, selected, you know, uh, nonprofit organization uh, in the state of Indiana because uh, my study is focused actually on Southwestern uh, Indiana. So I strategically selected uh, organization only in Indiana. Then I uh, sorted this organization uh, by, uh, counties, you know, uh, to focus more specifically, specifically on Vanderburg and Warwick counties. And uh, this was done uh, through uh, a random selection by uh, zip codes. Um, and then I also did a random selection of organization by subsector uh, based on the uh, NTT, NTEE codes, uh, which is National Taxonomy of Exempt Entities. And uh, organization, for example, in uh, arts and culture are categorized as A organization, A, letter A. And uh, organization in education are categorized uh, B. Uh, and organization in health are in uh, E, F, G, and H. These are organization in the health subsector and uh, organization under the category of uh, uh, IJKLMNOP, uh, Organization in Human Services. So um, 132 organizations met the selection criteria 
mentioned uh, above. And then I proceeded through a random number generator to select 12 organizations in the uh, arts and culture subsector, 11 organizations in education, 14 in health, and 18 in human services. After this, uh, this uh, selection, I came up with uh, 55 nonprofit organization total, and then I conducted a web content analysis of those organizations. And to measure, for example, uh, financial disclosure, I identified four items, which are the annual report, the uh, IRS Form 990. For those of you who may not know what the Form 990 is, this is uh, a tax document which allows nonprofit organizations you know, to um, provide information about their finances, how much money they made uh, during uh, given fiscal year, how much did I spend uh, in the program, how much did I spend in uh, paying salaries, and so on and so forth. And the third item was the uh, audited financial statement. And the fourth, state, uh, the fourth item is the administrative cost of funds. And then to measure uh, performance uh, disclosure, I have identified three items. First of all, does the organization provide uh, its mission on its website? This is uh, some you know, basic information, but uh, I found out that uh, there are some organizations, unfortunately, uh, that fail to provide this basic information on the website. And secondly, uh, do organizations uh, describe you know, their purpose? Do they tell their audience on the website what are their purposes? What do they intend to solve? What are the services you know, they provide to uh, their clients, to their constituencies? And the third outcome is about, uh, the third item is about outcome. Do they communicate about you know, the outcome? What are the impact they're having on their communities? What are the results you know, of the, the programs they are con conducting? What are the results? What are those outcomes? Do they communicate about those outcomes on uh, their website? And uh, uh, regarding the, the, the dialogue aspect of online accountability, as I previously mentioned, uh, has two components, which are stakeholder input and interactive engagement. And to measure stakeholder input, I have identified four different items also. Uh, contact us button, do they provide you know, a contact way for uh, individuals to reach out to them? Uh, do they provide a stakeholder survey? Do they have a message forum on the website? Do they provide a list of their staff members? These are crucial information that you know, should be put on every organization's website. The staff members, for example, it is good to have uh, this list because, uh, you know, for some people in the community who want to communicate, you know, who want to reach out to somebody in the organization, when they have the list of people on the website, they know who to talk to. And uh, to measure interactive engagement, I've also identified four items. Do the organizations have a link to their Facebook page? Do they have a blog? Do they have a newsletter? Do they have e-donation? Do they, uh, that means that do they uh, uh, allow you know, uh, individuals to make donations on the website? And uh, regarding the asset and personnel size, this information uh, were found on the NCC core file also. And as I said, this study is still in progress, and uh, hopefully we will have other opportunities where I will be able to communicate about you know, the key finding. Uh, but for now, this is uh, what I get, and if you have any question, please feel free uh, to reach out to me. Thank you so much for your attention.